Narrator Tony Sparrow, along tonight with Ed Warren and Lorraine Warren, famous ghost hunters. Now, Ed, would you want to just tell a little bit about some of the things, perhaps, that are in that museum that are really fascinating, scary things, perhaps, that you've collected over the years? One of the most famous would be Annabelle. 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 This is a Raggedy Ann doll that's made like thousands of other dolls, except that this doll was used in communication. In the 2010s, Annabelle dominated horror films. Over and over, we got new Annabelle films that went over the past, present, and future of this homicidal possessed doll. Annabelle was first exposed to the Goliath that is pop culture through 2013's The Conjuring, where she made a brief appearance. After this film, the creators noticed the obsession the viewers had with the doll. So, they put her in more, and more films, until most, like myself, simply got tired of the character who is now either mentioned rarely or not at all. And if she does get a mention, it's at the butt of a Chucky joke. With her last film being five years ago, and The Conjuring The Devil Made Me Do It being actual garbage, it's safe to say the craze she brought has died, if just for now. But what made these films especially terrifying was the prospect that these events actually happened. The Conjuring film itself being based on an event in the 70s where the parent family was harassed by a spirit. The Conjuring films and the events in the films all circle around the Warrens, who are the Nick Furies to this horror CU, and show up to save the day because they attack ghosts. Aren't they so awesome? Probably not. But what if these true events that the Annabelle series is trying to feed you are all fake? Well, yes, I know it's a no-brainer that the films aren't accurate nor realistic at all. Rarely a film that claims it's based on a true story actually is. Or even if it is, it's extremely loose. But I'm going to unravel something further and tell you that the facts of the story of Annabelle are completely made up. In fact, by the end of this video, you will believe that Annabelle is as real as Bob. We, we don't talk about Bob. And you might be surprised to see a familiar face as the final nail in the Annabelle story. The best way to start a story is at the start. And the start of Annabelle is a little girl by the name of Annabelle Higgins. The films have Annabelle Higgins as a poor orphan who through unlucky circumstances finds an already possessed doll that then possesses her and makes her some murderer, little, and then big girl. Now, is Annabelle Higgins ri- no. The story of this crazy possession is completely fabricated by the film. She doesn't exist. In fact, the actual origins of the Annabelle doll is unknown. So, let's start at the real beginning. The true and factual beginning of Annabelle, according to the Warrens, is a lowly nursing student by the name of Donna or Diedri, Based on accounts, the name of the nurse changes, and this will be the first of many inconsistencies in the story. Donna was staying in an apartment with her roommate Angie, when one day her mom arrived with a Raggedy Ann doll, which she claimed was bought at an antique store. And I say she claimed, but Donnie, Angie, nor her mother have ever made a statement or even have any records of existing. No interviews. Nothing. The Warrens have used the excuse of them not wanting to be involved, even after Annabelle became a multi-million dollar franchise that I'm sure would pay handsomely if you were the ones who originally owned the doll. I'm surprised the Warrens didn't claim their death to cover up the fact that they never came out, as they claimed the death of a biker who apparently, after insulting the doll, met an untimely death after leaving. And isn't that just the perfect way to silence any criticism? Don't insult the doll, or you'll be horribly murdered. This isn't the first time someone has been seemingly horribly harmed by this possessed Raggedy Ann either. A priest comes to my home one day. Young fella. 
has his rectory right here in uh, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Ed, I'd like to take you and Lorraine for a ride in my new car. Very proud of it. When he took us back, he said, what about this doll everybody's talking about? Could I see it? I understand it puts slashes on people. I brought him into the museum. It's in a chair. Mm -hmm. He looks at it, picked it up and threw it right across the room. Less than an hour later, driving home on Route 84, his brand new car went out of control. Half of his car was sheared off by a tractor trailer truck. He should have been killed. So apparently the doll will only kill you in automobile accidents, a real departure from the films. It's very convenient that the doll only retaliates away from the Warrens' house as well. So remember, as long as you're listening exactly to what the Warrens say, you're safe from the doll's wrath. Which I'm sure I don't have to tell you is insane. But don't worry, because the Warrens self-admittedly have proof. The skeptics, the atheists, mm -hmm. the first thing they attack you with is, where's the evidence? Where's the proof? This never happened. I not only have the doll, I have film. I have recordings. I have eyewitness accounts from credible people who have seen these phenomena happen in and around that doll. Where is the proof? Don't ask me. Don't ask them either, because it doesn't exist. Because it didn't happen. Not only is the story of Annabelle incredibly fraudulent and most likely the work of imagination, but the Warrens themselves are supposed horrible people. I'm not gonna go too far into the many crimes of the Warrens, but the claims include tons of exploitation of children, among many more horrible things. Now, the evidence I have provided should be enough to have you already convinced, but just in case, I have one more nail in the coffin. A Twilight Zone episode by the very subtle name of Living Doll. In the episode, a mother buys her daughter a living doll by the name of Talking Tina, who is hated by her infertile husband. After some scary occurrences in which the doll talks to the husband and claims her hatred for him in return, one night the husband hears strange noises and when he goes to investigate, he ends up tripping on the doll and dies. The mother discovers the body and the doll and learns that it was alive all along, ending the episode. The concept of a living doll was pretty novel, and while you could argue that it was a coincidence that just seven years later the Warrens would claim that another living doll was tormenting a poor girl, but I'd say the nail in the coffin here is that the name of the mother in the living doll episode was Annabelle, much like the name of the titular doll. So was Annabelle the creation of Warren's imagination? A doll that exists only in the world of film. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm.